We have our, as our guest today, Leo Honeycutt, who is the author of the fabulous new book, Edward Edwards, The Governor of Louisiana. Oh, wow. thank you. And um, I did look through the book. Um, it's a long one. It's a long one. So my first question would be, what prompted you? I understand it took 60 years between collaboration of, of Edwards and you. It took six years to, to put this book together. So what prompted you to, to write do it? Uh, what prompted me was Jim Brown calling up and saying, uh, you know, you're on the short list to write the Edwards book. This is like at the end of 2004. Uh, and, uh, and I said, you know something, Jim, I don't care if I'm on the list at all. Because uh, there's a lot about him I really don't like. And so uh, he said, oh, well, it's so nice to know that you're an objective reporter. I'm glad to know that I called a journalist who could uh, hear both. Okay, all right, okay. So I went over and I talked to him in prison. And uh, he was a very, you know, humorous guy, like always. Right. I mean, a guy that's unsinkable even in prison. And uh, so he said, I really would like for you to write the book if you'll write it. And I said, well, I'll, I'll take it under advisement. And uh, we need to kind of come up with an idea on what kind of book you want written. Because if you're looking for some kind of whitewash or, you know, you want somebody to kind of skirt past uh, things like trials and verdicts and uh, guilty and that kind of thing, then you need to get somebody else. And so uh, he said, well, I, no, I'll, I'll deal in the truth. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. I had seen some of the um, excerpts mm -hmm. and some of the videos. Oh, wow, okay. Which, which were quite interesting. Which videos? And, and one of them was, he, the book is very factual. I mean, he, he basically told you the good things and, and the bad, bad things. Well, I had to dig the bad say. out of uh, the public record, so. Okay. Yeah, so that's, you know, we started out, the first, the first edition of it was uh, 3,000, well, 2,000 pages and 3,000 footnotes. And that was just, you know, I mean, but you know, I was reading tens of thousands of articles on the microphone. But, uh, but I, you know, I had to recreate the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s just to kind of, kind of put his life into the context of where we were in the nation and in the world at that time. So um, it was a, I love history, I love politics. So it was not something I didn't want to do, but it was tedious and it was long, but I had to be correct. What, what uh, from talking with, with, with your readers that have read the book, mm -hmm. What did they find the most interesting part of the book do you have? I've really been gratified with the number of readers who have read the book and said, you know, it really has taken me down memory lane because I remember these events. I didn't remember when they happened, but I, but it's really, it's, you know, for people who grew up in Louisiana, uh, we all kind of lived through it. And, and you have, now you have benchmarks, you know, all the way down through the years about things that happened, the, the, you know, looming ferry disaster, uh, the continental grain explosion. Uh, I mean, it's just a number of things. Uh, the presidents, of course. Everybody sort of remembers how the presidents go, and um, and it really has been gratifying that the, even librarians have told me that uh, they use the book as much in reference as they do in biography. So, uh, of course, they. I mean, they gave me the Louisiana Literary Award back in February, and I thought. It was really kind of nice to hear how people are actually going to the book looking for facts. So you have some, some great credentials behind you. Too. Thirty years as a journalist, and you have yeah. some great credentials. Okay. And I and I, uh, and I actually do like to think that I'm objective. So, and I thought that Edwards, even though there were things about him I didn't like, and there are still some things I have problems with. Um, by and large, I think everybody deserves to to be heard. Uh, I think everybody would like for their side of the story to be heard, no matter what what the deal is, and uh, so. I felt like that I owed that to him. Do you think his image has changed uh, since your writing of this book? Has, do you think his image has changed um, before prison and it's changed after? Well, he was always polarizing, so there were always people that either hated him or loved him, or loved him or hated him. There was never there anybody was who was, There was never hardly a middle ground. There was always people that, you know, so that's always been the case. I think that. While we may have changed a few minds that, you know, were kind of on the fence, um, I think by and large he still has his basic uh, core audience and fan base that he's always had. And, uh, he has a following. He so has a following. And he always will. He, and, he, and he always will. And just like Huey Long, you know, he was polarizing between the good and the bad or, or between the people who loved him and the people who didn't like him. So um, I think Edwards is always going to have that no matter what. However, I will say that there's a lot of people I've talked to that said, you know, I never really liked that guy. And then I, I read your book and, and uh, you know, he really wasn't that bad. It maybe changed their opinion. It right? did. Oh, I have, I've heard that 
countless times, but but uh, while it may have changed their opinion, it, it's not going to change the facts of history itself. And I think it's I think if we look at a situation truthfully, is the only way we can hope to learn from it. So you know, the, the rumor could go forever. You know, when he's just a crook, we'll forget it. And really, that's what I researched for because I wanted to find out for myself. Well, was this guy really a crook? Um, and you know, and so I think I proved to myself that. On balance, he was not really the crook I thought he was, but like I like to tell him, you weren't really as good as you thought you were. So, um, uh, but the reality is, is every, nobody is 100% good or 100% bad. I had read, and I, I don't want to quote the governor, but that he's very appreciative of your writing this book on his behalf. Well, he is appreciative of it. I, I mean, I guess he would be, as he, was pretty forthcoming in that five years, but you know, way back at the get-go, I knew that if we were going to do a fact-based book, and at first it was going to be a first-person book. You know, it was going to be I was born, I grew up in Marksville, you know, that kind of thing. But you know, it was just it, that was just never going to work. For one thing, the Bureau of Prisons would never let us record an interview. They let us record one two-hour interview in five years, and the rest of the time I had I walked in with nothing, and they would give me a, they issued me a big pen and one sheet of paper. And so I had to keep notes, you know, all that time. And so, um, you know, it was very difficult to write a first person. So, knowing there was a credibility issue with him to begin with, that's why I spent two years in the basement in the middle of the library looking through microfilm, you know. And for people who have ever done microfilm, you know, it's like looking at a picket fence at 60 miles an hour, and you will get sick. I, I saw in the book it's divided into terms also. You have all the dates and the, oh, yeah. the, 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 the terms and the explanations. Yeah chronology of, of his life in Louisiana and our lives around him. Well, thank you. That's great. And everybody go out and buy the book. It's a wonderful book. And Leo Honeycutt, thank you so much. Hey, do you come here often? Uh, do I come here often? <laughs> I'm here all the time. <laughs>